Okay, recording. All right. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome to Jenkins GSOC Office Hours. Today is April 1st, 2022. So we don't have anything specific on the agenda today. So we're going to open this up to um, answering any of your questions and clarifying any doubts that you have. Um, the good thing is we did receive, let me see, uh, two, four, five completed proposal drafts. So we, we did receive another one, but I'm not going to count that one because that was incomplete. So as of this time, we have five, five drafts in um, that's under review right now. So let me start sharing my screen. Okay. All right, so I see that Diraj, you have a couple of questions. So I'm gonna hand it over to you so you can um, ask your questions. Yes, thank you so much, Elisa. Yep. So my question is around to, uh, like if we think about the end goal of plugin health score, we will be having and we will be delivering the scores via update center so do we agree on that? So actually, I'm not, I'm not yet convinced that we can deliver the scores through Update Center. We may have to provide a separate data service to do it because the Update Center payload is already so heavyweight that the, the people who manage Update Center are concerned adding scoring to it will, will be overwhelmingly bad. So, so somewhere we've got to have a service that provides it. I'm not sure if it will be an update center or somewhere else, but there's certainly a place that has to deliver for a plugin what its health score is. It may be a separate service. Did that answer your question, Diraj? Yes, it did, but it raised other questions as well. <laughs> like, then if, if you're talking about the other service, so are we thinking about doing a project where we would be implementing REST APIs and uh, uh, making them available through the same kind of JSON object? Yes, yeah, I think that's, I don't know if it would be a REST API, but I, for instance, Update Center today just downloads a large JSON file. And I could envision us having another JSON file that provides the, provides the, the scoring information. Is it, did that, did that address your question? Yes, it did. But I'm trying to just think like, how can we do that? Any hints on that? Well, well, so what I would envision is just as Update Center has a facility today that allows you to create a local copy of an Update Center for testing purposes, <laughs> for, for interactions, you would create something similar. And, and using that, that, that concept, oh, I want to run a local, local copy of this thing that delivers plugin health, health score data. Okay, sure. So I think I might need to do more research on this. So yes, um, my question, second question, uh, is what do we mean by monitoring under the data delivery section that was uh, written in our the idea page of this project? Ah, okay. So we'd have to we'd have to go to that page. So let's see. Uh, can you get okay. us? The... Stop sharing, Mark. Um, yeah, or we may be able to get, have you navigate there, or I oh. can let me go see if I can find it. So this was the project idea page, right, Diraj? Are you sharing your screen? Not yet. No, I'm. I'm just finding the page so that I bring it up and then I'll share. Just a minute. Okay. So sharing my screen now. Are you referring to something on this page, Diraj? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Under so. The data delivery. Okay. Data delivery. Oh. Oh. Okay. Got it. Right. So when, when this was saying monitoring, it was things like, well, I'll show you an example of the kind of, of a simple-minded 
form of monitoring that we use now. Uh, we have this thing called an acceptance test for the update site. So just a minute and we'll go there. So on ci.jenkins.io, every one, once an hour, it will perform a job that uh, does something relatively simple. What it does is it runs this test.sh script. And that script is, let's see, how can I find that? Let's grab that really quickly here. That script just looks like this. It, oh, it calls another script and that script verifies this. So it runs some checks. Do these URLs resolve? And it does that with curl. So this is the kind of thing that, that I was assuming in writing that the idea of monitoring. Now, this is, this is a very poor monitoring system if you're talking about really infrastructure monitoring. The Jenkins project actually has a donated Datadog instance that does much, much more thorough monitoring and that could be used as well. But this concept was just check that it's, it's responding. And all this thing does is once an hour, checks to be sure that the site is still responding. Now, in terms of production, that's not nearly good enough. The, the infrastructure team has Datadog, but for, for purposes of this one, this was the idea I had in mind. Does, does that answer your question in terms of what, what the meaning of monitoring was here? Yes, it did. Uh Sure. So that makes sense. Now I would just need to do some research on my own to think about how will we create that service which replaces update center and about deployment and monitoring part of it as well. Yeah, and, and, and for precision, it's not that it would replace update center, it would it would effectively sit beside update center, right? It could be asked, asked questions. Update center is asked questions about plugins and their their dependencies this service would be asked questions about plugins and their health score. So it's like this new service will not reinvent the wheel. It will perform the new functions, but uh, wherever possible, it will take help from the current update site. Right, there's no reason for us to replicate things that are already in update center like dependency information, right? The dependency information that's, that's in in this kind of list that's that's in these things is is already there we don't need to duplicate it but because health is not about dependencies anyway i would assume you wouldn't right. you wouldn't discuss dependencies at all yes that's true uh, okay sure so that answers my question great Okay, um, are there other questions for our mentors? Um, yes, I have one question. Um, so it was about the, hello, hello, Lisa. So it was about the evaluation process. So we have two evaluation processes defined by Google. So in the first one, um, so I was wondering because because of the way my schedule is there. So I have my vacations before the first evaluation. So I was thinking that I would be able to complete a major part of the project before the first evaluation. And I'm afraid that leaves me with little things to do after uh, for the second evaluation. So is it fine or should we divide our work equally amongst the two? I don't think there's any reason to, to slow yourself down. If, you, if you've got plan time off, before the that's after first evaluation, then do the do the work in the in the first phase, report it, then report the the content in the second phase. So I don't I don't think there's any expectation from us or from them that things will be okay, roughly 50%. If you know you have to be off during the second phase for a period, that means you'll you likely spend less time in that second phase on the work. Was that what you were asking, Vihan? So it's basically 
conceptually, you've got two or three weeks where you need to be gone during the second phase. And so you'll do most of the work in the first phase and be, be evaluation submitted for phase one. And then the evaluation of phase two will have fewer hours involved in it because you were gone for a portion of that. Yes, that is somewhat, yes, true. Okay, Some, somewhat is, is, what did I miss? Tell me, tell me more about if uh, there's so something. It was not about the leave, but it was just that I would get more time. So like I can work in both the phases. So that's not an issue, but I was wondering, like I'll be able to dedicate around 150 hours in the, before the first evaluation itself. So or perhaps even 175. So, um, ah, I see. So what you're saying is you may actually be able to, to inv because the projects are scoped at 175 hours total. And your notion is you might be able to put in 175 hours even before the first evaluation. Yeah, that is the question. Yes. Okay. So, so, and, and that one, I, you know, I don't know that. I don't know that I've seen any guidance from, from Google one way or the, other, or the other on that. We may have to do some research separately to see what that means because I'm, I'm assuming that your mentors may not be able to support you at, at 2X, 2x volume time investment. One of the challenges is the mentor team has to be ready to support your efforts as well. And if you're if you're running 40 hours a week, you know, so in a in a four or six week period, you're going to get 160 hours in. Um, that's that's going to be that may be heavier than the mentors are able to support. Oh, okay. Understood. Now, now if it turns out the those extra hours don't mean an extra load on the mentors no objection that just one of my worries would be the, the the scoping at 175 hours is in part because we don't also don't want to overload the mentors mm -hmm. understood all right thank you good question right. very good yeah okay So while we wait, are there other guidance that you might or have uh, that you can share with, with our potential contributors, Mark? Other things that you can think of? Or Kristen or Chris? Yeah, so, so I've, I've liked the, the thought that's going into how do we fit things into timelines? How do we, and Vihan's, Vihan's question leads towards that, right? It's mm -hmm. how, how specifically, how do, we, how do we partition the work into phases, into weeks or periods that, that fit with the, the plan for Google Summer of Code? So by all means, be thinking about that. And, and yes, certainly considering technical details, how does this part fit with that part? Um, be sure that you're doing some things that involve you in code with the Jenkins project. Um, Rishikesh has been a good example of one that I've seen. He submitted, uh, submitted pull requests to the Git client plugin with specific changes. Those, those are a good positive thing because it, let us, it lets us interact with you on code so that you can start to get a sense of how we, how we work, what, what the rules of engagement are in the Jenkins project. Good feedback. Um, I think Darash has another question. I've used uh, carbon dot now uh, for adding code snippets to the proposal might be helpful for someone. Okay. It's in the chat window, Mark. Uh, yeah, I, I've, I'd never seen carbon. So it does a picture of source code. Yeah, you just need to paste your code and uh, you can select the different themes as per your liking and it will present the code beautifully and you can just take a snippet, save it in a PNG form and add it to your proposal rather than just copy pasting the text on your proposal. Hmm, interesting. Okay. 
There is also yeah. a code extension option in Google Docs, which actually you can install and then you can format your uh, text like a code uh, in oh. any language, basically. It detects the language automatically. So shell script, Java, C++, Python, anything. It's an nice. extension. So I, I wasn't aware of that extension. Behan, any chance you could share a link to that extension? Sure, I would. Just a minute. I have a question about the, uh, about like, uh, for the for the feedback on the proposals, uh, like what is the procedure and uh, is it is it that like uh, you guys would be planning to have a certain amount of mentors view each proposal or comment on each proposal? Yeah, so our plan is to have, the initial uh, plan is to have, the mentors for that project idea uh, focus on the proposals for, the, for their project idea. And then the second part is that we would solicit for additional mentors to review it as well. Um, so that's, that's the current plan right now. So uh, is there like a, any date that this would happen by or? I would have to take a look and I, I, I can take a look uh, back at the Google Summer of Code um, timeline and then I'll stick the dates on our, um, on our, our, uh, our agenda page right here. Um, so, Alyssa, I think, I think Aryan's specifically asking about the drafts that they've submitted. So Aryan, oh. if I remember correctly, one, your draft is related to Git, if I remember right. Did I remember yeah. correctly? Yeah, yeah, sorry, I'm behind schedule on doing those reviews. I, I solemnly promise that I will do those reviews and give you the feedback. Yeah. yeah. And so, so my expectation is that before next office hours, so before next, next Thursday, I will have given feedback. That way you have time enough before the, the opening of, of applications to Google. Because if I remember correctly, Alyssa is in April 9, the opening of yeah. applications to Google. I think that's about right. So we will definitely get feedback back to you before yeah, that, for sure. With with my hope is that it will be this before the end of this weekend. So before Monday, your time. But but, but that's work Mark's has been commitment. a little busy. <laughs> Work's been a little busy with a certain problem here and there and everywhere. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Uh, more time for me to work on my uh, proposal. Exactly. And that's, that's why it's, 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 it would be terrible of us to have asked you, please get those into us. And then for us not to give you feedback that that's, yeah. thank you very much for submitting your draft. And, and we'll use that draft as, as the platform that we want it to be to help you have a good proposal as you bring your proposal all the way to, to submission. Thank you. Yeah, I'll try to work with the mentors to get some dates in for you guys so you have an idea that when we can try to shoot for a deadline to get feedback back to you. So while we're um, probably thinking about more questions, so then um, right after this, office hour, we will be having a brainstorming session. Um, so if you guys would like to join that, the information is on the Gitter page, um, the Gitter channel discussion. So take a look at that. And um, I think the, the, the dial-in is different. So use the dial-in that I, I had placed in the, um, the Gitter channel. All right, and that's, that's for the Git um, cache maintenance proposal. Right. So right. If, if you're not working on the Git cache maintenance proposal, you don't need to attend. There's not, not any real benefit to you if you attend something where we're discussing detailed technical components of the, the Git cache maintenance proposals. Code blocks. Interesting. <laughs> 
Okay. So Vihan has shared the, the link to the code blocks syntax highlighting for Google Docs. Interesting. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Thanks for sharing that. Yes, thanks very much. I think I'm just going to go ahead and install it. Mm. All right. If there are no others, Alyssa, I think we may go ahead and just end early. I'm not sure that I've, uh, there's much value in us just staying yeah. on the line. Any other questions? Now, there was some controversy, actually. I don't, I don't detect anybody who it might apply to, but there was some discussion in the, the Google Summer of Code mentors list about the concept of embargoed countries. And, and there's, given the current war in Ukraine, uh, there are countries that Google is not allowed to have people participating in Google Summer of Code projects from those countries. And Russia is one of those. So if you live in Russia, you are excluded. And, and so there are others, North Korea, for instance, is excluded. Uh, there are a few others. So be sure you read. Now we're relying on Google to ass assess that that's not the Jenkins project's job to decide if you're eligible or not. Yeah, good point. All right, well, thanks. Okay, thanks everybody. So we'll meet those who are doing the Google, the, the Git code exercise, we'll meet up in about five or six minutes. See you there. Yep. Bye. Bye.